Okay, we're going to now go over Lecture 8. So we're going to do a recap of Lecture 8. Lecture 8, we start talking about the general rate law. So we've talked about what it was in Lecture 7. In Lecture 8, we actually went through how to calculate our general rate law. So our general rate law, again, is rate is equal to K times by A to the M, B to the N, and if we have a set of data, we can determine what all of this information is. So if we have a set of different concentrations and different rates. So with rate and concentration data, we can determine our general rate law. Okay, so let's just take something like this. So here we have an experiment, one, two, and three. We have concentration of A, concentration of B, and then the subsequent rate. I'm just gonna go one, two, one, 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 two, one times 10 to the negative two, 2 times 10 to the negative 2, 2 times 10 to the negative 2. So just some made up rate data. So let's look at what we do in order to determine our M, our N, and then our uh, K value. So for our M value, so M, we use two experiments where the concentration of A changes. but the concentration of B stays the same. So that would be experiments one and two. Okay, experiments one and two, we change A from one to two, but B stays the same. So to solve for our M, we do x to the m equals y, where x is equal to the larger A concentration divided by the smaller A concentration. And then y is equal to the larger A concentration rate divided by the smaller A concentration rate. So just in general we would have in this case x is equal to 2 divided by 1 which gives us 2, y is equal to 2 times 10 to the negative 2 divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 2 so it equals 2 again, and xm, actually let's go ahead and put in our values, so it would be 2m equals 2, so m would equal 1, so we would say that that is 1, or a, re a reactant order of 1. Do the same thing for n. But now we just have x to the n equals y. So we would do x equals 2 divided by 1, y equals 2 times 10 to the negative 2. And let me erase all of that. I'm going to do that in a different color. Let's do this in a different color. So now we're looking at experiments 1, and three. A is staying the same, but B is doubling. So our X here, so to solve for N, we have X equals two divided by one. Y is equal to two times 10 to the negative two 
divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 2 minus 2 to n equals 2. So n is equal to 2. Or sorry, equal to 1. So both of them are, uh, so m equals 1, n equals 1, m plus n equals 2. So they are first order reactants. a second order reaction. We want to solve for K. All you would do in this case is you take one of the experiments and put the data in then solve for K. into the rate law and solve for k. So for instance, we could take any one of them. We'll do experiment number one. So our rate is equal to k times by a to the 1, b to the 1. So for the first one, our rate 1 times 10 to the negative 2 to k, and each of these are 1. And we get a k value equal to 1 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay, very easy. Some notes about k. k, our rate constant. The units are based on the reaction order. If we have a first order, actually let me start with zero order. If we have a zero order, k equals molarity divided by seconds. If we have a first order, k is equal to seconds to the minus 1. If we have a second order, k is equal to seconds to the minus 1, molarity minus 1. Third order, seconds minus 1, molarity minus 2, and so on and so forth. So we're going to increase our molarity down there at the bottom. Okay, so this concludes the general rate laws. We are going to move into differential and integrated rate laws. So we're going to look at first order and second order in this review video um, as that's what we went over in class. So for our first order process, oh, and, and half-lives. So let's look at all of those. So for our first order process, this is where the rate depends on the concentration. of one reactant okay we call this molecularly unimolecular from what we learned today okay so our differential for this would be negative delta a over delta T is equal to KA. With some math, you can get to the integral or integrated rate law. This gives us ln of A at time T is equal to negative KT 
plus ln a times 0. So our initial a concentration. This integrated rate law can be used to determine our um, initial concentration, a concentration at time t, or at what time something is a specific concentration. Doing some math, we can get our half-life. And this is t1 half is equal to 0 0.963 over k. So these are the three equations we use for a force starter, uh, including the regular rate law. Um, the half-life for uh, your first order process does not depend on your initial concentration. It's only one. Um, and let's see, some other things to note. Um, your integrated rate law basically tells you how you can get a linear relationship between concentration and time. So our linear relationship between concentration and time is ln of A versus time. Right, so if we graph those two, where our ln of A is our Y, our time is our X, we will get a linear relationship where our rate constant will be, uh, oh sorry, yes, our rate constant will be our slope, or technically our negative slope. So it would look like this. And we go up to this point. So the slope equals negative k. And our y-intercept is equal to ln a naught. Okay. Next, we're going to look at a second order process. With our second order process, we have our um, rate dependent upon two reactants or one reactant squared. Okay. With our second order process, we're only going to look at the integrated rate law for a, um, a single atom type or a single molecule type. So only look at the integrated rate law for a second order process so it can order reaction that is second order in one reactant. So one thing will be second order because um, the math just gets too complicated and convoluted for this particular class. So we're going to look at the differential rate law for second order. That is negative delta A over delta T is equal to Ka squared. Then we have our integrated rate law as 1 over A at time T is equal to our rate constant times by time plus 1 over a at uh, time 0, so our initial a concentration, our half-life for a second order process is going to be t 1 half is equal to 1 over k 
a knot. So we do depend on our initial uh, concentration of our reactant for um, a second order process. And lastly, to get a linear relationship between our concentration and time, we do 1 over A versus time. And it gives us a linear relationship between time and 1 over A. Where our slope is equal to k and our y-intercept is equal to 1 over our initial a concentration. That wraps up lecture number 8. If you guys have any questions about that, please do not hesitate to let me know.